Good morning, it's Johnny Boy. Uh, I'm on the project a little bit late this morning because I went and uh, seen a, uh, a young, a, cu a couple uh, that have had some work being done and uh, they've had a porcelain patio and it looks good initially when you, when you look at it from the inside of the kitchen, but when you go outside, you start seeing the problems. One of the first problems that they actually have there is that there is a, um, they've basically paved over a, an inspection chamber, which isn't good at all. You need access to inspection chambers. That's why they're called inspection chambers. And then we have um, a border, a black border with a block paving brick edge against the porcelain product, which aesthetically in black, it looks good, but for me, but that doesn't matter. That's not the problem when it comes to design. There's good design and there's bad design, but and I would have used maybe a slate product uh, as a contrasting brick edge. But in this case, they've used a block paving brick, which looks a little bit commercial in comparison to the porcelain paving that they've laid. And, um, but what they've got is they've got a dry joint all the way across the border, right the way across from A to B, running about 10, 11 meters, I think it is, something like that. And um, it's just a dry joint, and but that sits next to a flower uh, bed. And that flower bed is gonna have lots of uh, sort of weeds and, and uh, things that, uh, that are gonna grow into that dry joint. And you know what it's like when it grows in between block paving. And uh, you see it on driveways all too often where they haven't sanded over correctly. So what do you use? Do you use a cementaceous grate along there so no weeds can grow in there or do you br brush in sand? So it's not good at all. Weeds are going to grow into there and they're going to have it all the way along. They've got this con modern contemporary patio and they've got weeds growing into it. They're, well, they will do anyway. Um, there's no doubt that that's going to happen. The old area, the old porcelain patio that's been laid, um, I think I didn't measure it, but it's probably about four meters by about 11 meters. So it's a square patio. Uh, apparently they didn't want to cut it into the shape, like meandering shape, like a curvaceous shape. They just didn't do that. They say that they've never seen many patios. Uh, porcelain that's been cut in a meandering shape and with curves, which is, well, I just totally disagree with that one. And then, of course, they've used uh, a brushing grouting system on a porcelain patio. And uh, you don't want to be doing that at all because the water, with any paving really, brushing grouts aren't the best. Um, but in some cases, if you have a sub base that has the porosity value, the water can get away. And it's good for the DIY market with a brush and grout, is it's very simple to install, but you you can get stain in it with it. And they've used a, a brush and grout system, and already, it hasn't been down six months, and already the grout is breaking up. It's not good at all. So you can imagine what it's gonna be like when uh, the winter comes, when we have those sort of freeze thaw effect on that patio. It's not gonna be very good. On the surface, it's gonna start breaking down and they are gonna to have to regrout at some point. You'll have an opinion on that and um, I don't think it's good at all. You, you wanna keep the idea about any wearing course, as we call it in civil engineering terms, you want the, the water to get off the surface as quickly as possible. In one area next to the, the linear drain drainage system, which actually uh, runs parallel with the house and it wraps around uh, a, a a left angle and it goes off to a right angle going down along the house uh, they've used because it's, it's moved away they've used a silicon which looks sightly because it's just a uh, it just doesn't look right in color in compared to the grout that they've actually used why they've done it and they've only done it in just like a meter and just one place and it just doesn't look good at all the linear drainage system in itself isn't good because it's not deep enough in that's no way that that linear drainage system is going to accommodate the amounts of surface water when you get that initial downpour of rain on a patio it's not going to cope with it they got two drainage points one at one end of the house and one at the other end of the house the one on the one side as you look at the house on the left hand side is actually going into the linear uh, system uh, and there is apparently a drain below it but they haven't bored a hole in it and um, the, literally I think it's only about 50 mil deep the linear drainage system so that's not good at all you know they could be firing that straight into the four inch pipe down below uh, the, the down pipe down into the four inch pipe down below and it's, it's going to get away there was an inspection chamber apparently nearby so it could have went into that that's going to cope with the, the amounts of water that's coming off that roof space and, it's, and there is a substantial roof space then there is a down pipe over the other side of the house 
However, there is an old drilled out there. But again, the depth of it, you're gonna get, um, when it rains sometimes, as you know, we get really heavy rain and it's just gonna splash back and come out. And they've got, I think it's either a K render or a Parrax or a Weber system uh, wall. And that, that wall is actually gonna get absolutely soaking wet with the splashing back. And of course, they've actually, with this linear drainage system, it's not actually um, at the correct height. It's actually at damp course level. And the patio is actually a little bit higher, so it's sloping. It's really unsightly. It doesn't look good at all. I wouldn't be happy with it if it was my patio. Um, but they're reluctant to take it any further with the company that actually did the work for them. I suggested that they should probably go back to them, but having a patio up to damp course level without they've got bridging i mean the linear drainage system is tight to the house it's leaning to the house and when water sits on top of the the drainage system in places on those little squares it's going to run back and it's going to hit the damp course and you're going to have that bridging effect and then you're going to get water uh, transferring across into the, the, the superstructure being the house. So it's not a good thing what, what I've seen this morning. Like I said, initially when you go in, it looks okay. But actually when you start delving, start looking, it's not a good thing. Um, you know, Tony McCormack talks about um, bending the rule, um, the paving expert. Uh, you can come up to one below damp course, and I've done that many times. But what I always do, I always leave like a, a 50 millimetre gap between the linear drainage and the house because i feel that the water can permeate down to the ground naturally when all that water starts coming down to the side of the house it can get down into the ground now a lot of you are going to say well why am i bringing this information this morning well the reason i'm bringing this information this morning to actually provoke a consumer and a contractor to actually think about what they're doing i couldn't actually live with that or sleep with that if um if it was my job um, I just couldn't even think about uh, doing something that is, it's poor. And it's not, I'm not going to mention who the company is and where the paving come from and the advice that they actually had and how they went about it. But um, as they say, um, they've been, um, it's not good. It's just not good at all. And uh, when you look at it, for any contractor going out, they would see the problem straight away. And uh, what do they do about it? Do they go back? Do they get the, the, the client the, the, the company to actually deal with it um, I think they're a little bit reluctant to get it to deal with it because they just don't want the hassle and um, I've suggested a few recommendations and uh, you know I welcome your feedback and what your recommendations would be should they go back to the company should they take them to court if they ain't going to deal with it and they've actually been paid that's the thing about it you know um, if you're thinking about having a patio done or any landscape work and you need some advice, just give me a call, speak to me. It's not a problem at all. I'm there to, to help. And uh, like I said, the last thing I want to do is I don't want to be sort of giving evidence in court against any company. Um, but because I think that um, just the pictures, even a judge could see the, the problems that could be um, that could be created as a result of this poor patio installation. And uh, do I want to show pictures of it? Well, not really. Maybe I should. I'm not sure whether that's the right thing. It's, it's okay. I don't know. I'm not here to shame people. You know, I've, I've told uh, this couple that, that what they should be doing is possibly going back to the, the company and speaking to them and saying, look, you need to put a few things right. They need to remedy it. And, uh, Think about your guarantees. Uh, do, do your contractors offer you a guarantee? Um, I don't know. Um, it's just a difficult one. They spent a, an awful lot of money on something that is uh, potentially going to cause a hazard to their property with the damp rising up on the outside and on the inside. And um, because it's that, that from the inside, outside, that easy transition that people actually want but you actually got to think about the problems it could could cause and um, there are systems out there with bifolding doors that you can put in uh, it works by the bifolding doors but it's when the bifolding doors finish is that when you've got paving up to damp course level um, the problems that it creates and um, as long as you don't bridge you're okay 
but it's at what point you bring your patio next to your, your house and also the splashing up onto you certainly in this case where they have render is, and this system this this render system is just going to soak the amounts of water that's falling on that patio and um, that's not a good thing i really feel for him this morning so you know don't make that mistake don't fall into that trap of um commissioning a contractor to do some work for you without actually knowing their work and understanding what they're doing so if you need some help just drop us an email info at greentoplandscapes.co.uk or uh, just give us a call 07795 595 994 now i've got some work to do i've got to get on uh, because my customer won't be happy have a great day